Assuredly, the laughter of a sinner is an abominable sacrilege, since this world is rightly called by our father David, a veil of tears. There was a king who adopted one of his slaves as his son, and he made him lord of all that he possessed. Now it happened that by the deceit of a wicked man, the wretched one fell under the displeasure of the king, so that he suffered great miseries, not only in his substance, but in being despised, and being deprived of all that he won each day by working. Do you think that such a man would laugh for any time? No, answered the disciples. For if the king should have known it, he would have had him slain, seeing him laugh at the king's displeasure. But it is probable that he would weep day and night. Then Isa, Yeshia Jesus wept, saying, Woe to the world, for it is sure of eternal torment. O wretched mankind, that Allah, the source, has chosen you as a son, granting you paradise, at which you, O wretched one, by the operation of Satan, did fall under the displeasure of Allah, and was cast out of paradise, and condemned to the unclean world, where you receive all things with toil, and every good work is taken from you by continual sinning. And the world simply laughs, and what is worse, he that is the greatest sinner laughs more than the rest. It will be, therefore, as you have said, that Allah will give the sentence of eternal death upon the sinner who laughs at his sins and does not weep. The weeping of the sinner ought to be like that of a father who weeps over his son who is near to death. O oh, madness of man, that weeps over the body from which the soul is departed, and yet does not weep over the soul from which the mercy of Allah has departed because of sin. Tell me, if the mariner, when his ship has been wrecked by a storm, could recover all that he had lost by weeping, what would he do? It is certain that he would weep bitterly. But I say to you truly, that in everything for which a man weeps, he sins, except when he weeps for his sin. For every misery that comes to man comes to him from a law for his salvation, so that he should rejoice when it befalls him. But sin comes from the devil for the damnation of man, and yet man is not sad about that. Surely here you can perceive that man seeks loss and not profit. Bartholomew said, Master, what shall he do who cannot weep because his heart is a stranger to weeping? Isa Yeshaya Jesus answered, Not all those who shed tears weep, O Bartholomew. As a law, the source lives, there are found men from whose eyes no tear has ever fallen and they have wept more than a thousand of those who do shed tears. The weeping of a sinner is a consumption of earthly affection by vehemence of sorrow, just as the sunshine preserves from putrefaction what is placed uppermost, even so this consumption preserves the soul from sin. If Allah should grant as many tears to the true penitent as the sea has waters, he would desire far more, and so that desire consumes that little drop that he would shed, as a blazing furnace consumes a drop of water. But they who readily burst into weeping are like the horse that goes faster, the more lightly he is laden. Truly there are men who have both the inward affection and the outward tears. But he who is thus will be as Jeremiah. In weeping, Allah measures more the sorrow than the tears. Then said John, O oh, Master, how does man lose in weeping over things other than sin? Isa, Yeshia, Jesus answered. If Herod should give you a mantle to keep for him, and afterwards should take it away from you, would you have reason to weep? No, said John. Then Isa, Yeshia, Jesus said, Now has man less reason to weep when he loses aught, or has not that which he would, for all comes from the hand of Allah. Accordingly, shall not a law have power to dispose at his pleasure of his own things, O foolish man? For you have of your own, sin alone, and for that ought you to weep, and not for aught else. Matthew said, O Master, you have confessed before all Judea that a law has no similitude like man, and now you have said that man receives from the hand of a law. Accordingly, since a law has hands, he has a similitude with man. 
Esau Yeshaya, Jesus answered, You are in error, O Matthew, and many have so erred, not knowing the sense of the words. For man ought not considered the outward form of the words, but the sense, since human speech is as it were an interpreter between us and a law, the source. Now did you not know, that when a law willed to speak to our fathers on Mount Sinai, our fathers cried out, Speak you to us, O Moses, and let not a law speak to us, lest we die. And what conveyed a law by Isaiah the prophet, but that, so far as the heaven is distant from the earth, even so are the ways of a law distant from the ways of men, and the thoughts of a law from the thoughts of men.